teams to make their move into the Big East Tournament. It's a beautiful night for women's soccer action as two of the top teams in the conference do battle here tonight in Providence. Hi everybody, Adam Giardino with you. We'll have Megan Caffrey along in just a moment. But here tonight, we're looking at two of the top four teams in the conference as Providence College welcomes Butler to town. Let's take a look at the standings for these two teams. Tonight's game means a whole heck of a lot. And even these standings, which were updated earlier today, they're not even totally up to date. Georgetown, the top team in the conference, fell in overtime today to DePaul. Well, what's that going to do to the bracket as we, again, get closer and closer to the end of regular season play? That's what it looks like right now. But Butler, Xavier, they could leapfrog Georgetown in the standings, depending on how things really shake out the rest of the way here tonight. Butler is a team that is supercharged by a couple of high-octane goal scorers. The first of those is Katie Soderstrom. She's got seven goals for the Butler Bulldog. She is a sophomore, and she's a two-time Big East Offensive Player of the Week here in 2019. She's got seven assists as well to go along with that she's been dynamic, and so has her sophomore counterpart. Butler is going to be fortunate the next couple of years to have these two at the top. Anya Savage has seven goals as well, including in mid-September, goals in four straight games. She could really catch fire, and Butler needs her to do that here tonight. With a look at Providence College, here's Megan Caffrey. Thanks, Adam. This Friars offense is powered by the dynamic duo sophomore forward Elena. on the season, three of which are game winners, and head coach Sam Lopes was telling us before he thinks she's starting to play some of her best soccer. As for Hannah, the junior was critical in the Friars' come-from-behind win over Creighton on Sunday. She scored both of her goals within five minutes of one another, and Coach Lopes was telling us he needs these two to be on their A game tonight in order to come away with three points. We'll be back with kickoff on the Big East Digital Network from Anderson Stadium after this. Okay. We got it. We'll see you up there. Yep. We'll see you around. their move into the Big East Tournament. It's a beautiful night for women's soccer action as two of the top four teams in the conference do battle here in Providence. Welcome everybody, I'm Adam Giardino. Pleasure to have you along. We'll have Megan Caffrey on with us in just
running out for teams to make their move into the Big East Tournament. It's a beautiful night for women's soccer action as two of the top four teams in the conference do battle here in Providence. Welcome everybody, I'm Adam Giardino. Pleasure to have you along. We'll have Megan Caffrey on with us in just a moment. But here tonight, Providence College hosts Butler, two of the top four teams in the conference. And let's take a look at what the standings look like right now. And in fact, it's not even quite up to date. Georgetown just lost, the top team in the conference just lost to DePaul, one nothing in overtime. So that's even going to have a bit of a seismic reaction. Should Butler win this game here tonight, Georgetown would be tied with Butler waking up tomorrow. And this is waking up today in the, stand, in the bracket. When you take a look at that bracket, that's how things look right now. But of course, with the results still rolling in, there's plenty to be concerned about if you're Georgetown and plenty to accomplish if you're Providence College and Butler. For the Butler Bulldogs, they're run by a couple of steam engines up top. And the first of those is Katie Soderstrom. Soderstrom with seven goals this season. She's just a sophomore from Carmel, Indiana. She's been outstanding with seven assists as well. And opposite her is one of the other seven goal scorers, Anya Savage. She's scored a goal in four straight games back in September, but she's been keeping that hot foot going all the way through the month of October. Those are the two players to watch for Butler sending it over to Megan Caffrey for the PC Friars. Thanks, Adam. This Friars offense is powered by the dynamic duo sophomore forward Elena Gerlakis and junior forward Hannah McNulty. For Elena, this is just her second start in conference play. She has five goals on the season, three of which are game winners. And in talking with head coach Sam Lopes before the game, he was telling us he thinks some of her best soccer is ahead of her. As for Hannah, the junior was critical in the Friars come from behind win over Creighton on Sunday. She scored both of her goals within five minutes of one another. And Coach Lopes was telling us two of these players need to get involved tonight in order to come away with three points. We'll be back with kickoff for more on the Big East Digital Network from Anderson Stadium after this. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Back inside Chappie Field here at Anderson Stadium in Providence. The national anthem wraps up and we are ready for some midweek soccer action. Providence College Friars taking on the Butler Bulldogs. They've flown all the way out from Indianapolis and one of these teams hoping to come away with three points here tonight in the way that things have been shuffling around in Big East play. A win here could go a long way in determining the seating in conference action. The starting lineups for, well, we'll start with Providence College led by Sam Lopes on the sideline. Lopes is in his sixth season at the helm and this is the starting 11 he puts out there. You see Shelby Hogan in goal. No surprise there whatsoever for the red shirt junior from Franklin, Massachusetts. We highlighted Elena Grolakis and Hannah McNulty, a couple of dynamic, dynamic goal scorers at the top. Meanwhile, for the Butler Bulldogs in net, they have their mainstay. Big East goalkeeper of the week back just two weeks ago, Stephanie Rodriguez, she's in there. And for Butler, the two players that we highlighted in the open were Anya Savage and Katie Soderstrom, 14 goals combined between them. 
For a team that Sam Lopes described as being a, a team that likes to win one nothing, you wouldn't think that two players combining for 14 goals goes a, a whole long way in achieving that goal. Butler is a team that can pour a couple of goals on you if you're not careful. Butler with the neon yellow green socks here tonight. It's going to be hard to miss them as they're streaking around the field trying to pick up a road victory on Providence College, a team that has been very successful here at home. The Friars are 5-2-1 and one at Chappie Field this season. Away from Providence, they're just 3-3-1. Three, three and one. So Providence College is a team that's had some success this season, but they like their home digs. Butler, meanwhile, on the road, they're 4-3-1 and one away from Indianapolis. And it's not easy to make these trips. Midweek with academics swirling in your head, you've got to get on a flight, make your way out east. And Butler, the team that's trying to come away with some critical points down the stretch here, after this game here tonight, each of these teams has two more opportunities to pick up points and pick up solidifying points in the standings. Providence College, home against Villanova in a couple of days on Sunday. On Thursday, after that, they travel down to South Orange, New Jersey to take on the Seton Hall Pirates. And for the Butler Bulldogs, after playing the PC Friars here tonight, they wrap up with a couple of home contests Sunday against Marquette and then wrap it up next Thursday against Xavier. So for Butler, they've got an opportunity on the road, and then they get to settle into home sweet home. Butler is a team that's well-tested this season. Providence College, you really could argue the same. Their non-conference part of the schedule has prepped them well, and both of these teams come in with three wins on the season in Big East play, and again, just trying to make their way up the standings as best as possible. If you missed the update, at the top of the broadcast, the top team in the conference, Georgetown played a little earlier today against DePaul. DePaul is a team that finds itself in that mix of a tie with Providence, Villanova, Marquette coming into today for those critical last spots in the tournament. And DePaul knocked off the Georgetown Hoyas. So the rest of the conference is on alert. I'm sure they're chomping at the bit. And Butler, a team that is absolutely chomping at the bit with Stephanie Rodriguez in net because three points here today for Butler would tie them with Georgetown. Of course, with Xavier, still an opportunity to take outright first place with a victory of their own. The Friars clad in the traditional gray home tops with the white shorts, white socks. Providence College sends Hannah McNulty out there, the Warwick, Rhode Island native. Last time out, a couple of goals in what was a comeback victory for the Friars over the Creighton Blue Jays. Not an easy road test. You talk about travel, how about flying out to Omaha, Nebraska to pluck away a 2-1 victory. We are underway here in Providence. Thanks for making us part of your Thursday evening. And right off the bat, ball down pitch is forced out of bounds and an unforced turnover for the Butler Bulldogs. Nearly a turnover for Providence in a dangerous area. The ball bounces free to the far sideline. That's Olivia Lucia with it. Providence College comes in averaging just over a goal per game. Butler a little bit better than that at 1.67 goals per game. That's third in the conference. So Butler is a team that comes in third in the standings. And a lot of their statistical rankings pretty much tell that story. For Providence College, they come in seventh out of ten in scoring average. But it's their goals against average, which is second in the conference, that really holds up with Shelby Hogan in net. What does Butler do well? One of the things that they do well, shot accuracy. 51% of the shots that they take are on frame. That is tops in the conference. And they're good at taking a lot of shots. They're second in the conference in shots on goal. So it's volume and accuracy, which pretty good one-two punch if you're the Butler Bulldogs offense. In terms of condition, the wind here tonight blows from right to left across your screen. If you tuned in for the Providence College game the last time that they were at home, that was against DePaul. It was a scoreless draw. That was one of the windiest games that Sam Lopes, in all of his years of playing and coaching soccer, said he had ever been a part of with the wind blowing in that same direction. Good step in by Lucia to thwart an opportunity by Katie Soderstrom. And we've got a stoppage as a player 
down behind the play for the Providence College Friars. The clock is frozen. Seems a little early to be having a cramp type issue for Lisa Verhoeven, somebody that is just about tops on the team in minutes per game. She's a freshman from the Netherlands. As we see Michelle Zolinski, the athletic trainer for the Friars, jog out there to have a look at her. And sometimes it's something behind the play. Some of the injuries that you hold your breath most about. Verhoeven, she attended Porta Monsana College over in the Netherlands, and she's been a mainstay back there starting all 16 games as a freshman. She's helped to her feet. She's walking off with a limp. And we'll have to see how this plays out the rest of the night, but obviously somebody that Providence College has been incredibly used to having back there. You take for granted when a freshman is able to play almost every single minute of every single game, but that's what Verhoeven has done since stepping onto campus. It's powering through it, no doubt about it, as she ambles her way to the sideline. Wait to see what options exist off the bench for Providence College. Can't imagine that Verhoeven is going to reemerge anytime too soon. For now, Providence College is going to play a man down, it looks like, in the hopes that Verhoeven can, in fact, reemerge. She takes her right shoe off, her cleat off on the sideline. Here's an opportunity and a blast by Anya Savage. That one's drilled way over the top of everything. And a goal kick coming up for Providence College. Getting a look at Shelby Hogan. Last time out against Creighton in a comeback victory, she stopped 12 of 13 shots on goal. An incredible performance for her, somebody who is pretty used to having a high volume of shots thrown her way, but 12 out of 13, that's an incredible number in a victory. Improving some of her season-long numbers for Hogan. Goals against average is at .89. The save percentage is now up to... 86.1% on the year, so a lot of good numbers for Hogan, somebody who's come off a couple of strong seasons her first two years in net for the Friars. Good connecting passes for the Butler Bulldogs. A left-footed strike into the box, and it goes clear through everything. And another goal kick coming up for Hogan. Continue to peer down over the top of Lisa Verhoeven. She had her right ankle taped up. She gets back out to the midfield stripe, and she is jogging back onto the field. That is surprising and encouraging for the freshmen and certainly encouraging for the Providence College Friars. We'll have to wait and see how she does, how fit she is, but obviously dinged up in just the first minute or so. Alexis Rothman, who had bounced back to more of a defensive position, now shuffles back up to her normal midfield spot with Verhoeven back onto the pitch. Good ball swung to the far side for Butler. Peyton Black, one of the unsung heroes for the Butler Bulldogs, at least that's if you listen to one of their co-head coaches, Rob Allman, tell it. Likes what Peyton has been able to put together for Butler Bulldogs this year. Obviously all the talk, all the oxygen, Katie Soderstrom, Anya Savage. But there are other players that have made this thing go for the Butler Bulldogs who check in at 8-4-3 and three this season. We've got a foul and a free kick coming up for Providence College on the near sideline. That was... Hannah McNulty's cleat getting stepped on the back of it. So as she adjusts her boot, she gets back into the box. I've got a set piece coming up with Angie Swaza 
another impact freshman teeing it up for Providence College here. A hooked ball that was a missed strike by Swaza. Plucked away by Savage. She's quickly tracked down from behind by Christina Rogers. Amber Birchwell as well on the back line for Providence College. A couple of players that we talk about not leaving the pitch much at all for PC this season. So far at the opposite end, Stephanie Rodriguez hasn't touched the ball hardly at all for the Bulldogs. Meanwhile, here's Hogan with yet another goal kick. And that's good and bad. Goal kick means that you're working the ball downfield, but for Butler, by and large, it just means that your home run passes haven't been connecting and not quite what you want to do either. Big thundering shoulder thrown at the back of Savage. That's Rogers who sends her tumbling, and that is quite clearly a foul assessed. Here's Savage. She was the one that went tumbling down on this from Rogers. Nobody's going to argue that one way or the other. And at the opposite end, the play set up by Savage is knocked out of bounds, and we've got another goal kick coming up for Shelby Hogan. Adam Giardino with you. We've got Megan Caffrey down on the field for the sideline reporting. We will hear from her in just a couple of minutes. On a beautiful night in Providence. As the sun goes down, it was about mid to upper 60s today in Providence. Incredibly unseasonably warm. In a good way. But as the sun sets, it's definitely gotten a little chillier. Could have gotten away with the t-shirt earlier today if you wanted to, if you're at the game tonight. Sweatshirt and probably a jacket would be advised. This is Soderstrom playing around with it just outside the box, tries to elude a defender. She works it to her left foot and sends it sailing wide of the net. Got a whistle blowing this one dead on the restart by Hogan. <laughs> and palms upward for a couple of Providence College Friars as if to say, why? Why are we restarting this? Nevertheless, they do. Po Providence College is led by head coach Sam Lopes in his sixth season at the helm. Ninth head coach in Providence College program history. Named to the position back in April of 2014. Bit of a mistouch there for Butler, but Leonard is there to clean it up. Keeps it alive for Macy Miller. Miller's someone whose name we haven't said a whole lot so far here tonight. She's a transfer from Indiana. A couple of seasons there and was Big East All-Freshman her first year. A couple of years back has found nice, a nice role for the Butler Bulldogs. Here's a ball into the box. Sails over the top of everybody. Even the 5-foot, 10-inch tall Anya Savage couldn't quite climb the ladder to go get that one. Ball sent in, Julia Leonard. She's from Palatine, Illinois. Chose Butler because she has her sights set on the physician's assistant program, the PA program. And as you're clicking around through the different bios for these Butler women's soccer players, she's not the only one that has that listed there. So as ambitious as these athletes are, these student athletes at times are even more ambitious, incredibly impressive group that Butler puts out there. It's a smaller school in Indianapolis, certainly for the Division I perspective. 
but great facilities, great classrooms, class sizes is something that a lot of players remarked on when they were choosing their college and the whole process. Here's a shot on goal. Hogan jumps up and punches it over the top of the bar. An excellent opportunity from about 25 yards out. That's Macy Miller looking for the first goal of the night. Lulls the defense to sleep, and really from about 20 yards out, she sent it in on frame, and that was ticketed for the corner, if not for the great sprawling effort by Shelby Hogan. So now a corner kick comes up for the Butler Bulldogs. Here's an in-swinger from the near corner. Hogan goes up, some contact, but she's able to hang with the bobble. Annika Schmidt, a redshirt senior, was the one with the little bump on Hogan, who at 5'11 is as sturdy a goalkeeper as you're going to find in women's college soccer. So the slight bump, no whistle, play on. So here's Providence College looking to respond. Ball in the direction of Amber Birchwell is deflected away. And now this one's sent over the near sideline for Providence College. Lucia tosses it back. Yana Braun. Headed away, and that's a collision. A couple of Friars and a Butler Bulldog goes down. Lexis Rothman, the one whistled for that infraction. Well, Providence College, so far we've seen a couple of loud fouls. Christina Rogers, Lexi Rothman. But they came on 50-50 ball. Now here's a turnover, an opportunity. Birchwell with the shot. It's deflected, and it continues to roll to the end line where it's eventually plucked up by Kowalski. Well, that was an opportunity on a platter for Providence College, and Birchwell... Not able to get it cleanly on goal. Katie Soderstrom with the throw in. A Couple more years of her goal scoring ability and look at that move as she creates some space down the far sideline. Centering pass is deflected out over the sideline. She'll have a throw in about 20 yards up from the stick. Butler looks to create a left-footed chip into the box, a couple of skips, and kept in play by Hogan. 13 minutes in here tonight, scoreless between Providence College and Butler. It's a Butler Bulldogs team that, according to Friar head coach Sam Lopes, said they're an incredibly tough team to play, well-organized, which that phrase at times can get a little cliche, but... The crux of the matter is he feels that Butler loves to play in one nothing games. So if you're the team that falls behind early, you're in trouble against Butler. They play with a one goal lead as well as anybody in the conference. Rogers builds on the near sideline through the midfield. Curling ball in the direction of Butler's Amanda Kowalski, who sends it all the way back to her keeper, Rodriguez. Booms it to the near sideline off the head of Macy Miller, and it's a throw around midfield for Providence College. Alessandra Arachi saying her name for the first time here tonight, senior from Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Ball sent over to the far sideline, juggled, but not kept in. The flag goes up, and so it's a turnover over to Butler. Ball near side, Julia Leonard with it for Butler. Back to Leonard. 
She's got Macy Miller on the flank. Sends a ball to the top of the box. Cleared out. Well done by Providence College, though. Not totally out of threatening position. Peyton Black with it on her right foot. She looks to swing the field. Instead, it's worked back to the near side. Leonard pauses. Butler content to work this one all the way back to the defensive third of the field. They send Miller on a run. She tracks it down. Now works on Arachi. Miller, a right-footed ball across the box over the top of Anya Savage and clear for a goal kick. Mentioned earlier that we've got Megan Caffrey down on the sideline, and she's got a report on some of these changes that we're seeing from 2019 Butler from years past. Thanks, Adam. Changes indeed. The Bulldogs actually lost six starters from last season, including forward Paige Monahan, who was drafted 10th overall in the NWSL draft. And in talking with co-head coach Rob Allman, he said this year there isn't as much experience on the field, and naturally what comes with that are extra bumps and bruises early on. He specifically pointed out the Wisconsin loss and Utah draw. Two games, Coach Allman saying his team had opportunities to win. He said he knew the front half was going to be a challenge, but his team has matured as the season has gone on and he said Adam now his team is really getting into stride. Players are starting to get these big game experience that was one of the things that he did talk about in that phone call this week where he's talking about you lose so many of those players that you were naming and it's the big game experience that you lose but once you have a schedule as front heavy as Butler has had with Wisconsin at Utah Illinois, you're going out and you're playing some really good teams in the non-conference slate. So by the time you get to Big East games with three games to go in the regular season and you need a victory on the road, you've had some players that have been through the grinder a little bit. Again, that was Megan Caffrey down on the sideline. I'm Adam Giardino with you. Thanks to our entire Big East Digital Network crew centering ball into the box, cleared away. Providence College sends it back out to midfield. Though a touch aimless, and it's back over to the Bulldogs. Near side flank, Alyssa Yarish, senior from Morristown, New Jersey. She works it up from the back. This ball sent in on a hop. Gobbled up by Shelby Hogan. A couple of bounces for the Franklin, Massachusetts native who played her high school Soccer at Bishop Fien High School. A lot of midfield plays so far today for both of these teams. Even as we take a look at the shots which favor Butler 4-1, you wouldn't qualify any of them as dangerous opportunities. Officially one shot on goal for the Bulldogs. Even that one seemed a bit unremarkable. So nothing to speak of for scoring opportunities early for these teams. And, and that was something for Providence College and Sam Lopes that he was talking about stats and how he feels that statistics aren't the best way to view a soccer game, not the best lens when you're looking at a box score following a soccer match. He, he said you can see 25 shots in a game combined between two teams, not shots on goal, but just shots in general. and think even as a head coach he couldn't remember even 10 of those so it's scoring opportunities that are what drive you as an offense and so far we've seen zero here's an opportunity in the box headed away big defensive play for Butler on the back line this one worked back out to Arachi Friars still looking to work Swaza turnover turned right back on the foot of Birchwell. She sends it into the box. Knocked around off a defender. Out of bounds. Grilock is nearest to it. And a corner kick earned for Providence College. Hannah McNulty, Elena Grilakis, a couple of players working hard up front. Here's the centering ball by Amber Birchwell. McNulty couldn't get it on goal, but it's because it went off a of Butler Bulldog. This is service from the far corner. First corner kick of the match. Good curling ball headed away out of the box by Annika Schmidt. Here's a long drive taken and bounces free and out of play. 
Stephanie Rodriguez, the junior goalkeeper, will pick it up. First time this season, so she's a junior who transferred after a couple of years down at Gardner-Webb, where she started 25 games, played all 40 games for Gardner-Webb, but just didn't quite feel the fit and came here to Providence College. And finally getting significant minutes last time out. Nice job by Braun keeping it in on the sideline. Now here's Birchwell jockeying for it to the end line, but shielded off well enough, and Butler earns a goal kick. Stephanie Rodriguez needed to make one save last time out. Butler came in off of a 0-0 draw against the number 11 team in the country, Georgetown, who after the tie dropped from 11 to 14, and after today's result, which is an overtime loss at DePaul, will likely drop even further. Just a foot race for Macy Miller, and she can't quite get there. On the goal kick for Shelby Hogan. You can see that Creighton and Seton Hall up to date. That game is in the first half, scoreless between a couple of teams that find themselves at the bottom of the table. Creighton and Seton Hall, ninth and 10th in the conference respectively. They're scoreless right now. Creighton is one, three, and two in conference play. And the way that things are structured, where a win earns you three points. If you're Creighton, you win against Seton Hall, okay, you are suddenly up to eight points. You win on Sunday, and suddenly you go into your final game of the year with a whole different perspective on what that next Thursday night game could possibly mean in terms of your postseason aspirations. Out of bounds near sideline. As we approach the midway point of this first half here at Chappie Field in Providence. Could not ask for a better October 24th evening. Sometimes we say that tongue in cheek from the climate controlled room of the broadcast booth, but it is an absolutely perfect evening to just be sitting out and taking in a soccer match. Butler clad in the traditional road blues and the anything but traditional socks as they scramble from right to left here in the first half going into the back of the wind. And that's where we're seeing a couple of these balls, a couple touches going a little strong for Butler. The wind was blowing so strong in this direction last home game against DePaul that it was just about impossible if you were the team going into the wind. And it made it really hard to judge passes if you had the wind at your back. It made for a total mess of a game despite it being a scoreless game. And interestingly, Butler, just as we talk about possession and how critical it was in that game, ultimately leading to no goals, Butler is a team that really has relied upon possession, which is something that doesn't show up in the box score. It shows up in the box score in some sports. Football, namely, easy to calculate how, how long a team has the ball. Usually that leads to success. In soccer, it's something that Butler prides itself on, connecting passes, holding on to the ball, in their six Big East matches so far, Butler has outpossessed the other team five times, the only exception being that draw last game against Georgetown. I would say, through 25 minutes or so, Butler, just from the naked eye, has certainly controlled possession maybe 60-40 so far here in this first half. Leonard goes skipping and jumping through the defense. Now it's on to Anya Savage. She pooches a ball into the air onto the foot of Katie Soderstrom, who goes crashing through, and a punching effort by Shelby Hogan slices it away from a would-be goal-scoring opportunity. Good aggressive play by Hogan. Using that size to her advantage, knowing that if she came out with a clenched fist, that she was going to get there before Katie Soderstrom ever could. 
Monica Schmidt with the throw in a Zionsville, Indiana native. This season, two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Week. She transferred from UConn, where she played a couple of years for the Huskies, including 2016, where UConn finished number 20 in the country and finished 18-3-1. And, and Schmidt was a big part of that defense. But transferred from Connecticut to the state of Indiana. Found a home, no doubt about it, finding a home with the Butler Bulldogs the last couple of seasons. Some grabbing by Morgan Klusterman, but play on. Peyton Black fights for a ball on the near sideline. It's out of bounds. Alessandra Arachi goes down. We can have a free kick or a throw in. Yeah, free kick with a foul being committed on the near sideline. Angie Swaza. Puts the hand in the air, freshman had a free kick opportunity earlier in the game. This one struck a little bit better, about 16 yards out. A couple of players go crashing and then crashing down to the turf. Christina Rogers is quick to pop up for Providence for Butler. A bit of a slower stagger to the feet for Annika Schmidt. Rogers and Schmidt going airborne. Yeah, and you can see Schmidt get the brunt of it, the back right side of her head. As a result, we've got the athletic training staff hopping out there for Butler just to take a look at her. She says whatever she needs to to get the athletic trainer off the pitch. Christina Rogers, a pretty good spirited conversation with Providence College's athletic training staff. Both players must have taken persuasive speaking classes earlier in their college tenures. And at least for the moment, we will see Annika Schmidt come off. For Schmidt, because the play stopped, they had to send her to the sideline. But just as soon as the play resumes, I think we will see Schmidt hop back over the midfield stripe. In fact, both players are waiting for play to resume, and we'll see them both re-enter. And here they go. Both players are back onto the field. Rogers and Schmidt for Providence and Butler respectively. Here's a ball over the top into the box and Hogan charges out and grabs it before Katie Soderstrom could run onto it. Hogan directs traffic. And rolls the ball on the ground to herself, drawing Anya Savage a charging effort, but Boomed well downfield before Savage could get there. That's a pretty impressive leg into the wind tonight for Hogan. Good step in by Kowalski, and she's got a head of steam. Streaking down the far sideline. Here's a ball into the box. Otterstrom, Macy Miller, an opportunity. Another chance. This one turned aside over to the far corner, and a corner kick coming up for Butler. Great opportunity. That was Amanda Kowalski who began the charge downfield up the far sideline. She then curled in behind the play. Miller blocked. That's Arachi stepping in. And here in the far sideline, that's Yana Braun doing the duties. Nicely done. That, the best opportunity of the night for the Butler Bulldogs. 
Katie Soderstrom with an in-swinger from the near side corner. The ball sent out by Hogan's punch. Shot sent back in, saved off the post, loose, and Hogan pounces on it. Unbelievable opportunity for Butler, and somehow this game is still scoreless. Hogan with an incredible save. She sent it off the post, and then look at the reaction on the shot sent back in. Celia Gaynor, Annika Schmidt, both right in the neighborhood, but not enough to beat Hogan. The initial save was impressive enough and then sticking with the follow-up opportunity. So now Providence College tries to regroup. Seconds tick away as feels like the Friars are trying to settle some things down here. What a flurry at the opposite end for Butler. And yet we remain scoreless. Monica Schmidt with the throw and she was one of the players getting her nose in there. Despite being on the defense, she's got a pair of goals this season for Butler. Not often do you see a defenseman listed with a pair of goals, but early on in the season, that's what Schmidt had done. Here's a carry all the way down into the corner. Slide tackle. Savage deflects it out of bounds. And a corner kick earned. Second of the half for Providence College. Lisa Verhoeven, who went down in the opening few minutes, left, had her right ankle taped up. She is back in there, and she's ready to take this one. Low, hard, deflected away. She goes to keep it in, works around Soderstrom. Here's the service back in. That one's sent out by Rodriguez. A volley cleared well out of play by Providence College. And with 14 minutes to go here in the first half, for a second time tonight, let's send it down to Megan Caffrey. Thanks, Adam. Well, in the Friars' last save, I could really hear Shelby Hogan communicating to her back line, which is typical with the keeper. But what's actually unique to this Friars team is that they don't have a captain this year. And Coach Lopes told us there's no one player that he's looking for leadership in, in this team. And he even pointed out his freshman Alexis Rotham really gets in the mix, and she's vocal as well. He said he didn't want this team to be a dictatorship this year. He's looking for leadership from everyone. I thought that was a really interesting word, self-aware word, to use dictatorship. And that's something that he did say in that conversation where a lot of head coaches, that's not something you're always going to hear. You're not going to hear every head coach defer his power, so to speak. But certainly Sam Lopes wants to empower all of his players. And yeah, whether it's Hogan, Rothman, any number of players, Christina Rogers was someone he highlighted, but highlighted a little sheepishly just to – name a couple of names it felt like more than actually saying which player was more vocal, more of a leader than any other. Providence College coming in off of a comeback victory out in Creighton, looking for a positive result here at home for a few flashing seconds. It looked like Butler was going to take the lead. Here's Anya Savage letting it rip from deep. The wind grabbed hold of that one and sent it whistling over the crossbar. Here's another look, player who can score from anywhere. Although I feel like, it feels like, that ball would not be taken going the other way. In the second half, Butler's going to want to be a little tighter to goal before they let it rip from deep. Well, when you got the wind at your back, if you send it on the right line, it'll go. Here's a good ball up ahead for Providence College. Grolakis, a left-footed strike, misses just wide past the far post. Stephanie Rodriguez went sprawling to her left and didn't get a piece of it as Grilakis made a bid for goal number six. Perfectly placed ball, and look at that. Didn't miss by much past that far post. Grilakis is a sophomore from Lowell, Massachusetts. From year one to year two, she's made plenty of strides. Sam Lopes 
figured the biggest strides for her between years one and two, off the ball. Makes sense. Players getting more and more comfortable. Here's a look at that scoring update. You can check that in the upper left corner. Creighton taking a 1-0 lead on Seton Hall. About 10 minutes to go in regulation in that one. And that's a game. And here we've got a foul in a dangerous spot for Kowalski and the Butler Bulldogs as she goes to the turf. Butler going to set up for an excellent opportunity here. But you Creighton pull out the win. They get three points. A little momentum with two games to go. Anything can happen for Creighton to try to work their way back from the dead. Ninth place in the standings waking up today. They're trying to bump up a couple of spots and get to the top six and make the Big East tournament. And there's Kowalski who went down. It's Soderstrom and Savic. Take your pick. 14 goals between them, seven apiece. Who's going to take it? Soderstrom runs over the top of it. It's Savage who belts it right into the wall, low and hard. She regroups. She sends it in, headed away. Providence College looks to relieve that pressure. Grilakis tries to track down a turnover in the midfield. Macy Miller on the near sideline. Forced out of bounds, good step in for Providence College's Arachi. Still Butler ball though. Under 10 to go. First half action, 35 minutes of scoreless soccer behind us. That ball banged off of Yana Braun's leg and out of bound. Another throw in coming up for Butler. Do it again. That's Grilakis volleying it hard off of the retaining wall just below us to the left. Beautiful facility here at Chappie Field at Anderson Stadium. Providence, Rhode Island, the site of this one here tonight. That's Annika Schmidt coming into your living room. 5'9", redshirt senior. Played all 110 minutes last time out in that scoreless draw against Georgetown. She's trying to get this set up just so on the throw-in. <laughs> Couple of pump fakes. Still doesn't have what she's looking for. Throw-in headed deeper into the box. Cleared back out in the direction of Schmidt who settles. Miller forced to the corner. Now runs the end line. Sends a centering pass. That one's blocked away by Swaza. Well done defensively. Here's Savage, sends it just over the top of Hogan and sends it over the top of goal. A bit exasperated for Anya Savage. Here's a look. Didn't need much room at all. To just creep that one over the top. Butler has been buzzing here in the first half and we'll have to wait and see whether the wind is playing a larger factor than maybe what we're realizing where Butler's had the wind at their back this entire first half. Couple of substitutions. Kelsey Cummings and Caitlin Vieira into the match. Amber Birchwell and Yana Braun both check out. No substitutions for the Friars. Fears somebody that has started Eight of now 16 games for Providence College, but came off the bench for 27 minutes last match. She had actually started her previous six games, so 27 minutes was a total shift in role and minutes for her. Just outside the top of the 18, Soderstrom frees up her right foot, drives it low and hard, and just misses on the send-in for Anya Savage. Providence College hoping that these final seven minutes just tick off sooner rather than later because Butler seems primed for a goal. What an opportunity. Savage has to feel like one of these times that she's gonna find the back of the net. Savage, last year's Big East Freshman of the Year. She was second team all Big East as well last year. Seven goals, three assists, 17 points. 
She's at 18 points this year with two matches and some change to go in this one to add to that total, plus possible postseason play looming beyond this. Speaking of postseason play for Butler, they're a team that has put up pretty good numbers results-wise the last half decade or so. Here's Miller with a low ball, a bit of a missed touch by her. Arachi hustles after it into the near corner. Miller there to fight it away back to Leonard. Butler making the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history in 2015. They did it again in 2017. And even as young as this team is, it doesn't take a whole lot of contorting the mind to see with a couple different results that this team really should be, could be in that discussion again this year. But Savage and Soderstrom primed and ready to go for their junior and Caesar senior seasons after this. You have to believe that Butler is going to be a team that will probably find its way into the postseason the next couple of years. Take a look at, as we talk about women's soccer postseason, Big East field hockey postseason is just around the corner down in Hamden, Connecticut, not too far from where we're watching tonight's game in Providence down at Quinnipiac. Obviously, University of Connecticut, the perennial favorite in the Big East, but plenty of teams having some upstart campaigns and you never know. Big collision in the midfield. That's Miller coming back for the ball. She threw a shoulder into Vieira, but a play on. Inadvertent was the assessment. Now Vieira gets tripped up. That's by Peyton Black, and now a whistle comes in. Christina Rogers, Jr. from Scotch Plains, New Jersey. In high school, was All-State second team back in 2016 at Scotch Plain Fanwood High School. Suaza is absolutely hounding Butler in the midfield. She's emptying the tank with four minutes to go in the first half. Sam Lopes is urging her on. Vieira now turns it on as Providence College is looking to create a turnover and a scoring opportunity in the final few minutes. Headed into space. Lucia with the ball tapped back to Grilakis. She turns the corner. Kowalski throws her off the play. Grilakis fighting on the far sideline. Tiptoes her way into Kowalski who then backs her down like a power forward and clears it to a teammate. Providence College loses it over the near sideline. A whistle finally comes in. Providence College is a team that has been very, very good this season defensively. Second in the Big East in goals against average, and Shelby Hogan's been a huge part of that. This could very easily be one or two nothing Butler going into intermission and instead with a couple of minutes to go before intermission, we're still scoreless and Hogan a big part of that. A lot of nights in soccer, you don't have to have spectacular goalie play to put up a zero. Your defense can do a large part of that. But here tonight, it's Shelby Hogan who's kept this thing even with a couple of minutes to go in the first half. Without much in the way of opportunities, Providence College looking for lightning in a bottle here, but that one goes off of Arachi, and Butler will slow play this throw in. Slide tackle, Savage gets the worst of it. Friars, Alexis Rothman gets a piece of the ball, so even with 
the piece of Savage as she goes hobbling out over the, the sideline. She's down on her back and in a world of discomfort. Really sliding around, you can see her there. There's no doubt that Savage, that a piece of the slide tackle by Rothman got Savage's foot, ankle, it seemed. But as you could see from what we were just looking at, looks like they were looking at the knee of Savage. So let's see what we see on this replay. That it was, yeah, the... The foot was the contact point, but the knee certainly over-rotated. And it did it before she planted. It looked like as she the slide tackle came in that she never did land on the leg. So if we're looking for silver linings here, that's a little bit of one, though not good news for Butler and certainly not good news for Anya Savage. Down there at midfield, still trying to work through some things with the athletic trainers. So 90 seconds to go in the first half, and Butler suddenly without one of their spark plugs. Miller charges up the near sideline with Vieira hot on her heels. Flicks one back to the midfield. Beautiful touch to Soderstrom. She forced the ball over far sideline. Couldn't connect to Gaynor. Kowalski, but a good step in by Grolakis, and Kowalski takes it right back. Now Grolakis sends Kowalski down to the turf, and a dangerous play forces a whistle with Kowalski trying to play it while on the ground. As we keep peeking down below to see whether Anya Savage has moved, she has. She at least is no longer sitting down with the athletic training staff. What that means long term in the scope of this night and this game remains to be seen, but she's at least able to get up and no longer sitting down right at midfield. Final 30 seconds to go in this first half. Butler with the throw in. They seem content to just take their time and work this one closer to triple zeros. Final 10 seconds, out of bounds, and everyone seems content to just let the clock wind down. Final few seconds, tick off here in Providence. Butler, Providence College scoreless at the half. That's Shelby Hogan jogging off, and she's got to feel pretty good about what she's done here in the first half. Four saves for Providence College, a couple of them, the spectacular variety. The Friars will look to ramp up the offense in the second half. Friars didn't record a shot on goal in the first, but we're scoreless with 45 minutes behind us. We'll step aside. Halftime, then second half action comes your way here in Providence. You're watching the Big East Digital Network. When my time came uh, to stop coaching, uh, I was very fortunate that I didn't have to go cold turkey. I was able to start the Big East Conference and we came across the sky like a meteor. One recruiting year that they had that really turned everything around was the Ewan Mullen Pinckney recruiting year. It changed the face of Eastern basketball probably forever. just believed in ourselves and a lot of hard work on everybody's part. Every March, Madison Square Garden is home to everything that is college basketball. Yeah. It's snowing out. It's a blizzard, but we ain't going to stop.
think rightly. There were questions early on about whether the Big East could withstand the test of reconfiguration. And I think if you were here, we've done that and more. It's a monster league now. Last man standing, bring the flag. Uh, tough to coach in, but great for spectators and great to play in. The March of the Big East goes on. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're gonna feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Back in Providence, scoreless at halftime. Adam Giardino with you, with catching you up on some of the halftime happenings. We'll run through some highlights, some stats, and take a look around the Big East Conference. First things first, let's take a look at how we got here, which is to say no goals were scored, but there was plenty of first half action between Providence College and Butler. A lot of it coming from the visiting Butler Bulldogs. Macy Miller with an opportunity. That was a great save early on by Shelby Hogan. There'd be more where that came from. Providence College didn't have too many opportunities. This is about their second best opportunity of the first half in which they didn't record an official shot on goal. This was the best scoring opportunity by either team in the first half. How about these saves? Three of them totaled by Shelby Hogan to keep the ball out of the back of the net. And then this, though not on goal from Grilakis, was an incredible bid just past the far post. Stephanie Rodriguez made a diving effort on it. And no save needed there by Hogan, but only by inches did that one miss over the top of the bar. And one for good measure, Katie Soderstrom setting up her teammate, fellow goal scorer, and Anya Savage, who was buzzing, seemed to be destined for a goal, but didn't come up with one. And that tells the story there for Butler, out shooting Providence 13-4. The Friars did not have a shot on goal. And for Providence College, that needs to change in the second half. Can't score a goal if you don't have a shot on goal. Butler certainly seems like another 45 minutes will produce a goal or two for them based on how they played in the first half. Butler defensively, though, as we take a look around the rest of the league, they are led by Annika Schmidt. And defensively, Schmidt has been one of the best players defensively in the conference. And there she is, the redshirt senior, the defensive player of the week reigning in the Big East. Meanwhile, that's Marquette sophomore with three goals, a couple of 
hat tricks this season for Alyssa Bombasino. She's been incredible in just her second year on campus. And now look at the honor roll in the Big East as well. Didn't see any Providence College Friars picking up some of the weekly awards, but on the honor roll, Hannah McNulty, her two-goal performance against Creighton, erasing a 1-0 deficit, turning it into a 2-1 victory for Providence College. More than enough to earn her weekly honor roll. And for good measure, we got the offense, the defense, the honor roll. Goalkeeper of the week in the Big East this past week as well. Uh, we got Shelby Hogan in net. She was incredible with 10 second half saves against Creighton. Stopped 12 of 13 shots overall. Even when she didn't have the shutout, she still gets the weekly award. And the freshman of the week, Georgetown, an elite who's been someone that Providence College is more than familiar with not allowing a single goal against either of these two teams, Providence College and Butler, both going scoreless for 110 minutes against an elite this season. We're scoreless at halftime. We're going to step aside about six and a half minutes till second half action resumes. Back for more in Providence right after this on the Big East Digital Network. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. came uh, to stop coaching, uh, I was very fortunate that I didn't have to go cold turkey. I was able to start the Big East Conference and we came across the sky like a meteor. One recruiting year that they had that really turned everything around was the Ewan Mullen Pinckney recruiting year. It changed the face of Eastern basketball probably forever. just believed in ourselves and a lot of hard work on everybody's part. Every March, Madison Square Garden is home to everything that is college basketball. Yes. It's snowing out. It's a blizzard, but we ain't gonna stop.
Mike rightly. There were questions early on about whether the Big East could withstand the test of reconfiguration. And I think if you were here, we've done that and more. It's a monster league now. Last man standing, bring the flag. Uh, tough to coach in, but great for spectators and great to play in. The march of the Big East goes on. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. Back inside Chappie Field here in Providence. Adam Giardino with you. We've got Megan Chappie down on the sideline. And Megan, we're going to send it down to you for a little update on what happened in the first half. Adam Butler co-head coach Rob Almond stressed the importance of his team maintaining possession coming into tonight. And they did that in the first half. He was really pleased with that. He said his team got a lot of opportunities. They just need one to go in. Also, Anna Savage was just warming up here on the sidelines. Expect to see her play in the second. As for Providence, I asked Coach Lopes about his goalkeeper, Shelby Hogan. She had three saves, and he said simply, it's nil-nil. Adam? <laughs> That's certainly one perspective. It is nil-nil. Some outstanding opportunities for Butler. Shelby Hogan thwarting them all. Again, that was Megan Caffrey down on the sideline. And Adam Giardino with you here in Providence getting ready for the second 45-minute half of action. Maybe some overtime around the corner. Certainly the way that Providence College played offensively in the first half. They are going to try to change some things around offensively and get things going to goal. Meanwhile, Butler... They're huddled up thinking, if we do anything like we did in the first half, we will surely score a, gore, score a goal or two. And there's Anya Savage coming out improbably for the second half. When she went down and when we got a look at that replay, things did not look great for her right knee, but seems to have avoided catastrophe and she's even got a smile on her face. How about that? So she's ready to go. The Butler Bulldogs are as well. And we are just about ready to get underway here in the second half. Providence College outshot officially 13-4 in the first half. The shots on goal favored Butler 4 nothing. If only a couple of those went through, those smiles for Butler would be a whole lot more meaningful with a one or two goal lead instead. That girl Shelby Hogan, outstanding in net for Providence College in the first half. The Friars get this thing underway. They go right to left with the wind at their back here in the second half. Let's see how much of an impact that makes on these two teams and what they're able to accomplish. Ball rolls all the way into the box, hocked away before Providence College could get to it. A little miscommunication on the back line, it seemed, between Stephanie Rodriguez and a couple of the defenders. Rodriguez was tested once on an Elena Grolakis opportunity that missed the goal. Not required to make any saves. Meanwhile, Shelby Hogan had to make four saves officially, and I, I think all four of them would go in as above average on the difficulty meter. It was incredible to see Hogan doing her thing in net for Providence College and really for Butler's offensive firepower to show what it can do. We've heard so much about what Soderstrom and Savage can do, the duo at the top for Butler, and short of scoring a goal, they, along with Macy Miller, incredibly impressive for the first 45 minutes. Friars have been so good at home this season. 5-2-1 and one here at Chappie Field. Butler on the road 4-3-1. Long ball ahead for Providence College. 
Intended for Hannah McNulty, but it's headed away. Here's a ball chipped into the box. Rodriguez charges out and gets there just ahead of Elena Grolakis. Enough of a back screen set by Annika Schmidt to shield off Grolakis to prevent her from getting clean to that ball before Rodriguez could. This ball punched into the air with the left foot. And a 50-50 ball won in the air ultimately by Providence College. Butler tied Georgetown, one of the top 15 teams in the country last time out. And co-head coach Rob Allman had an interesting take on it. You figure you're going up against a top 15 team, a team that had not been beaten in Big East play this season, that if you're a team that gets them into a draw, you feel all right about it. But he said even with the tie, it's interesting because we walked away where people said, that's a good point. You should be happy about that. But... When he looked at the balance of the game, he wasn't satisfied with that kind of congratulations. He felt Butler had the best couple of chances in regulation, and then in overtime, that Butler had the best opportunity to score a goal. So a tie just didn't quite feel right. Lucia with an opportunity. That one's stoned aside, sent back to Rodriguez, and she drives one low and hard out to midfield. Ball is zipped from the midfield to the back line. Verhoeven with the ball on her foot. And Verhoeven was somebody that went down, as we talk about Anya Savic going down for Butler. Verhoeven had something similar happen to her in the first half where a minute or two in, almost behind the play, she had her right ankle lock up on her. She Sat down in the box, the play was blown dead. She had to hobble off, got retaped, and ready to go for the rest of the game to this point. Only had to miss about a minute or so. Ball sent out over the far sideline. Just getting underway in the second half, both of these teams trying to feel out the change in wind. Going into the wind where you were with it at your back, vice versa. Butler with the wind at their face now. A drive from deep, chipped into the box. That one winds short, but onto the head of a Friar, headed away to the far post. This one knocked down in the box, and it plops to rest off of Peyton Black's head. Shelby Hogan picks it up as Black, who's from Hebron, Kentucky, has just one goal in her career, coming in her 49th career game this season. Looking for one there on the doorstep, though. Good step in by Rothman to poke it free to Lucia. Zwaza bangs the ball up to the midfield. It's Grilakis. Lucia with an overlapping run. Doesn't use her. Cuts back to the midfield. Providence switches fields in earnest now as Yana Braun flings it over to the far sideline. A tangle over on the far side of the pitch, and it's a turnover, but Providence College earns it right back. 50 minutes haven't produced a goal for either side yet. Julia Leonard dances with the ball over on the far side for Butler. The Bulldogs looking to be a little slower out of the gate, certainly from how they finished the first half. Although what we saw from Butler the first 20 minutes of the first half was a lot of this. There was just a lot of possessing and passing back and forth, clean passes, but didn't accumulate anything that was momentous in terms of scoring opportunities. Those all came in the second half part of that first half. A 
Lena Grilakis chips one to the midfield. A minor collision as the ball stays on the feet of Butler. Anya Savage twiddles it back to Schmidt. Great step in by Grilakis, but it doesn't earn much for Providence College. Out over the near sideline and a throw in. Providence College possession. Some audible groans from the Butler Bulldogs, particularly Annika Schmidt, you see there. Olivia Lucia with the throw in from Monmouth Beach, New Jersey. Her father Chuck played football at Central Florida. Lucia with a couple of assists this season. Breaking the seal against Texas, she had one assist in her first 3,061 minutes of her career. And now she's got a couple since. Ball sent down the far sideline. Good run into the corner. McNulty sends it high off the defender. Out of bounds and an opportunity. Another corner kick drawn up here for Providence College. Third corner kick of the match. Three for Providence College. Two for Butler. And that right there now exceeds the season average for Providence College for corner kicks. Ball played short. Here's a run into the box. A feed is poked away. It heads to the far sideline. On a night where opportunities are few and the points in the standings mean so much for both of these teams, Providence College and Butler, they're scoreless. Both teams looking for three critical points. They're both in the top four in the conference as teams looking to work their way up the standings with precious few opportunities left to go in the regular season. Olivia Lucia bounces the ball over to Grilakis, back to Lucia. Into a crowd, opportunity and handball, and we get a handball call just outside the box. From 18 and change out, we are going to have a free kick coming up for Providence College. Here's a look. There was a minor dispute. And you can see that Yarish tries to pull the arm back. It gets the arm. If that arm is more closely pinned to her side, you could see the no call. Well, she didn't reach out and instinctively try to play the ball with her left arm. There is enough there certainly to assess. Now, if that happened two yards deeper into the box and a penalty kick was on the line, does that same call happen? I don't know, it gets dicier, but with no PK on the line, you're outside the box, the correct call made. Hannah McNulty, a quick strike, and she rockets it over the crossbar. Best opportunity of the night, and Stephanie Rodriguez can exhale on this drive by McNulty. It was almost too late for Rodriguez to react by the time that she saw where that ball was heading. Mentioned the standings and how important these critical games and points are right now for Providence College and Butler. How about that quick strike from Xavier? 14 minutes in, they've already got a 2-0 advantage on Marquette. What does that mean? Well, Xavier came into today a couple of points behind Georgetown in the standings. We've told you a couple of times Georgetown lost to DePaul. So with a win, an outright win, Xavier would be the number one seed in the driver's seat with two games to go in the regular season. And talk about putting yourself in a good spot with two quick goals. Just over 10 minutes into this second half in which a single goal feels like it would be enough for Providence College or Butler to come away with a good result here. That one turned aside, out of bounds.
Butler is the more explosive offense. They come in averaging .6 goals per game more than Providence College, which doesn't really sound like a whole lot, but when it's 1.1 to 1.7, .6 actually means a whole heck of a lot. Good acrobatics by Grilakis to stay on her feet despite the foul, but once the advantage was lost, the foul does come in, whistled on Peyton Black. Angie Swaza stands over the top of the ball. She's been the free kick specialist from the non-dangerous areas, but with the wind at her back, look at that drive. Deep into the box, it's headed away by Butler, and a slicing ball curls out of bounds over the near sideline. Substitutions ready to trickle in here in the second half. Becky Dean, a freshman who didn't play last time out, but getting ready for some action here in the second half for the Butler Bulldogs. Fancy footwork by Grilakis, frees it up to her left. Defense continues to clamp down on her. Nice touch by Lucia, centering pass picked off, and Butler able to take away a couple of individual efforts there. Providence College nifty footwork, but not able to string passes together. Confident header taken on the back line for Providence College. Butler was charging upfield, looking to send Miller on a run. Here is Miller making that run. Burst past Zawaza, frees herself, sends it in on goal. Off the post, it stays out. Soderstrom shot is saved by Hogan. And it's a goal kick coming up after a flurry of activity for the Butler Bulldogs. Will Hogan have this one hit the post? The question is, as it goes past Savage, did Hogan make a second save? It certainly seemed that way, and then it glanced off of Savage and out of bounds. That's why it's a goal kick. How about the reigning Big East goalkeeper of the week? Are you seeing anything here tonight that would make you think she's not up for a repeat performance for that award? Incredible stuff to keep this scoreless but it's been such a quiet Providence College offense here tonight. Three nothing Butler would seem like an incredibly reasonable score at this juncture if not for Shelby Hogan. And a couple of kind posts at Chappie Field. You can go a season and hit a post once collectively as a team and Butler's done it twice on balls that stayed out of the net. Back to Hogan. From a different angle, just past her dive. And look at how quickly Hogan scrambles back to her feet. She doesn't lament the fact that that ball was off the post. She was anticipating that ball, that ball was going to stay alive the whole time. Incredible stuff. First team, all Big East goalie a season ago. As a freshman, she was second team. As a sophomore, she was first team. And as a junior, she's right up in that discussion yet again. Despite the fact that her numbers are a little off of where they were last year, goals against average is .89 for Hogan this year. .77 a year ago. So a tenth of a goal per game higher than what she gave up last year. Save percentage is a touch better, in fact. And the spectacular saves are off the charts here tonight. Soderstrom gets to it right before it gets to the end line, rolls it in on Hogan. She vacuums it up.
just as Carlos Correa and Trey Turner are looking to do off in the World Series. Swinging left leg, booms it downfield. Approaching the midway point of the second half, both teams are looking for first blood. And if there is blood in the water, it's Butler that's sensing it. With incredible opportunities and yet nothing that's been able to beat Shelby Hogan, at least yet. Miller cuts to the center of the pitch. Ball swung all the way to the near side. It's Kowalski. Centers to the top of the 18, volleyed out. McNulty chasing down the ball, one on five, as Butler dangles it just, just beyond her reach. Verhoeven with a good defensive shield as Soderstrom races after it into the near corner. Kowalski goes down on a slide tackle outside the box and from a good angle, Butler's going to have an opportunity to set up something from right around 16 yards away. Hard tackle from behind by Yana Braun, who had lost a step and may have just figured, well, it's now or never before she gets to the 18-yard box. Might as well leave my feet and try to disrupt this. Kowalski was the one who went down on the slide tackle, and it's Kowalski who's getting ready to chip it into the box here. Hogan sets up her three-man wall. The service doesn't go direct to goal, sends it back post. Butler unable to do much with it. They had a couple of players there free with a head, Annika Schmidt was the one with the header. That's Schmidt now with the throw-in. But nothing particularly produc productive for Butler off of that free kick. Verhoeven flings her leg at it and it goes sliding over off to the far sideline. Schmidt's gonna get a running start at this one, try and send it as far into the box as she possibly can. And she's calling for a teammate to come hither. Instead sends it deep over the top of Savage. A quartet of Friars around it. Instead it goes back out to Schmidt. This time it's headed away out of the box, but not out of danger. Wanders its way onto the foot of a bulldog and then cleared out over the far sideline before Becky Dean could do anything with it. Nice opportunity on the follow-up. And we've got a whistle blowing this one dead. Hogan, she's been active. Sometimes it's better to be active. Maybe not this active if you're Shelby Hogan. I don't think you need to see two balls hit the post behind you, stay out, leave your feet for a couple of diving saves to feel like you're involved in the game. But sometimes it's harder to be Stephanie Rodriguez at the other end when all of a sudden late in the second half of Providence College has a great scoring opportunity and you've been both virtually and statistically untested for 70, 80, however many minutes. Hard to suddenly turn it on. And Providence College does not have an official shot on goals so far here tonight. Turnover by the Friars and head coach Sam Lopes is hollering from the sideline to possess and control the ball. He's not too thrilled with some of these one-touch opportunities rather than settling and assessing, surveying, making sure you're making the right decision.
opportunity for Butler bursting into the box. Miller with a shot and she sizzles it home. An outstanding score from Macy Miller. And she's finally cracked through for Butler. It's one nothing Bulldogs on the strike past Hogan. So here is Miller carrying past a couple of Friars, doesn't have a whole lot of room to let it rip, and she absolutely buries it past Hogan. Alexis Rothman wound up being the nearest to her right foot as that shot was released, and just an incredible individual effort there to carry, hold, possess, and then just rip it home. So Shelby Hogan gather the troops, try and rally, but when your offense has not had a shot on goal, and now you're suddenly down a goal with 23 minutes to go. Not an easy opportunity here. The senior Macy Miller with her fourth of the year, four goals, five assists, and now 13 total points. Transfer from Indiana coming up big for the Butler Bulldogs here tonight. Earlier this year, Miller was the Big East Offensive Player of the Week. Remember Birchwell goes down looking for a call on a grab from behind for Morgan Klusterman, doesn't get it. See, that's Macy Miller, the goal scorer, and the difference so far tonight. If you'd asked a couple of minutes ago, it's Shelby Hogan, the goalkeeper for Providence College, who's been the difference tonight. And now with a one nothing lead, no doubt about it. Macy Miller. Is it Alexis Rothman stepping up for Providence College? Friars need to have somebody turn it on. Rothman has not picked up a point in her collegiate career but somebody that as a leader has been so leaned upon by Sam Lopes in her first year on campus. Angie Swaza sends a ball into the sky, into the box, off ahead, out of bounds, and a corner kick forthcoming for Providence College. Swaza set up the free kick and Swaza jogs over. She's the one that sets up the corner kick as well. Friars looking for the equalizer, or at the very least, looking for their first shot on goal here tonight. Swaza plays it short, done that a couple of times. Here's a shot sent in, deflected wide, follow-up ripped and knocks down a Butler Bulldog. Shot on goal, knocked aside by Rodriguez. We've got another corner kick coming up. And some scattered laundry just about for the Butler Bulldogs as a drive disassembled one of their defensive players. Everyone seems to be all right. Waza ready to go again. This time she sends it into the box herself. Headed away, Schmidt steps up and heads it out to Soderstrom. Butler finally breaking through with a goal and Marquette breaking through with a goal of their own against Xavier. 14 minutes in, it was two zip. Xavier on top, now Marquette showing a little life late in the first half. Such a critical game for Marquette, but for Xavier it could mean with a win on the road, the difference between waking up and sole possession of first place. Should they hang on, they will have leapfrogged Georgetown by a point in the standings with a couple of games to go. This is the anti-penultimate game of the season for all the teams across the Big East. Bouncing ball by Arachi sent up ahead. With under 20 to go in regulation, the Friars 
looking for some sort of opportunity. They have officially registered a shot on goal. That latest corner kick was earned by a shot on goal that was glanced off of Stephanie Rodriguez. This one sent all the way back to Hogan. Bit of a misfire, soft ball in the air, chested down by Savage. Turn and a ball bunted over the near sideline. Grabbing, some throwing, but a play on through the midfield. Friars with possession. Great ball up ahead to Grilakis. Providence College looking to create. Grilakis chips one in the direction of goal, and it just sails wide. Out of play. Grilakis a bit forlorn as she walks back down the field. A pair of substitutions check in for Providence College. Kelsey Cummings and Caitlin Vieira, a couple of players we saw in the first half check in here in the second half. Macy Miller, the goal scorer, checks out for Butler. Gretchen Skogland is out or in, and it's Macy Miller who is out. Skogland from St. Louis, Missouri. Here's a turnover. Vieira never came back to it, but Lucia, fortunately for Vieira and Providence College, is able to react, regroup, get the ball back for the Friars. With Megan Caffrey down on the sideline, Adam Giardino with you. Thanks to our entire Big East Digital Network crew, and thanks to those of you who have made us part of your Thursday evening. Getting the sense that this is the time of year where if you're not affiliated with Butler, Providence, you're just a fan of Big East women's soccer, you're clicking around, checking out all these scores, all these games, clicking between Xavier and Marquette, now Butler and Providence College. Ton of scores to keep your eyes on because there is a lot of action happening on a Thursday night in the Big East. We've already seen a couple of surprising results. Hey, get up! Get up! Follow with the one nothing lead. They haven't really applied pressure on Shelby Hogan since. The seconds wind down. Butler not too disappointed in just letting the clock continue to go. Providence College works it through the midfield. Feels like they're trying to scale a mountain despite being down just a goal. It's this defensive unit for Butler that has been so stodgy all night. Vieira grapples in the midfield with Kowalski. Chested down over the near sideline. In play, they say, play on. This ball lost over the near sideline and Substitutions check in, and we're going to check in with Megan Caffrey on an update with the goal scorer from earlier tonight, Macy Miller. Hey, thanks, Adam. Macy's actually, she's down here on the sideline. She's getting rubbed out. You could see that she had uh, chiropractic tape on her left thigh, so the medical staff is just down here working on her thigh, making sure that she's okay to get back in the game. 
Thank you for that update. In the second half, when you check out, you are eligible to come back in. In the first half, should you check out, you are not. That is why Lisa Verhoeven, when she got injured in the second minute, they elected, Providence College did, to not replace her for a few minutes and let her get back in there. But in the second half, after scoring that goal, as you mentioned, getting rubbed down, they're doing their best to try and get Miller back in as quickly as possible. That went in high off of Butler's Celia Gaynor, the sophomore. Off the head, we're gonna get a look at this again. And they're checking to make sure that she's gonna be okay. Fourteen minutes to go in regulation. Providence College has time trickling down. Here's a drive blocked away. Well done by Katie Soderstrom. Forward getting back on defense. Bit of a missed touch on a header from Kelsey Cummings off the bench for Providence College. No Macy Miller back at the score table yet for the Butler Bulldogs. Although you wouldn't be surprised if, even if she's stretched out and healthy, if they opt to bring in more of a defensive punch and stick with that over the final dozen minutes or so. Butler, as much as they'd love a second goal, they'd more just like to keep a zero up there going up against Providence College. Here's Swaza, sends a curling ball with some good touch to the far corner. Here's a chip to the top of the box, sent in. Vieira couldn't quite get there enough to get a clean look on it, and Rodriguez scrambles over to pick it up. Keep talking about women's soccer, Big East postseason play. Well, the semifinals and finals out in Omaha, Nebraska. Right there is how you can get your tickets, biggies.com slash WSOC tickets. Head on out to Omaha. These two teams playing under pristine conditions here tonight. When we arrived at Chappie Field a couple hours before the game began, it was still in the 60s. That temperature has tapered off some. Hannah McNulty checks in for Providence College Friars. That's a big addition with fresh legs back in there. If you're down a goal trying to overcome a deficit, Taylor Crow swaps in. Junior from Noblesville, Indiana. Taylor Crow. Well, why did she attend Butler? Simple enough. She'd been attending Butler soccer summer camps ever since she was in fifth grade. And she thought that those camps run by 14th year head coach Terry St. John that when Terry said, yeah, we'll keep an eye on you, when she was in fifth grade, she thought she was kidding. And then the time came, and a decade later, those two are still running the pitch in Indiana together. Looking for offensive firepower. Mentioned that Hannah McNulty checked in for Providence College. Anya Savage checks in for Butler here with just over 10 minutes to go in regulation. Into the teeth of the wind, Rodriguez not able to get it close at all to midfield. We hypothesized whether the wind had a factor in terms of what Butler was doing and how good they were looking offensively in the first half. Well, with the wind at their back here in the second half, Providence College still has not been able to muster much. They had one good scoring opportunity. Yeah, that was about it. They have just the one shot on goal the entire night tonight, but it did come here in the second half. Vieira is warded off the ball. When playing a factor, 
Sam Lopes and the Providence College Friars have seen those flags prevailing a, a bit stronger at times this year, but you're definitely running into it if you're Butler here in the second half. Low and hard to the near sideline. Lucia. Providence College playing without urgency yet. I think as they see the clock tick under 10 minutes to go, an internal clock will start to wind a bit faster in players' minds, knowing they need to create something here in order to give themselves a chance. Take down in the midfield and an opportunity for Providence College to set up some 50 yards from goal. Opportunity for the Friars. Drilled down into the box. A header. Glances around. Settled. A strike. Blocked out in front. McNulty with the opportunity. And now a throw-in coming up for Providence College. No substitution on the PC throw-in for Butler as Macy Miller is ready at the scorer's table to come back in. Here's another deep ball sent in off of McNulty's head again. And this one sent out of bounds. Elena Grolakis checks in. No sign of Miller quite yet. Grolakis in. Verhoeven out. That's an offense for defense substitution as Providence College knows they need something in the final seven and a half. Macy Miller, who we mentioned was ready to go, wandered away from the scorer's table, has wandered back. So it seems that the next opportunity, she will check in for Butler. PC applying some pressure, pushing forward. Vieira's there, trying to pick up the scraps. Butler dallies around in their back line, now pooches it up to midfield. Here's a breakout, a countering rush. Kowalski looks to send ahead, intended for Crow. Knocked away, Grolakis not intent on coming back to it, but ultimately gets possession. Lucia deflected by Crow, deflected to a Butler Bulldog. Klusterman turns and knocks it back to Yarish. Great step over by Schmidt to prevent that pass from connecting. We've got players flying all over the place and a foul by the Friars. Great defensive reach out with the left leg by Annika Schmidt. That prevented what could have been a much more dangerous opportunity for Providence College. Clock stopped at 6.08. Annika Schmidt taking too long, according to the officials here. Now lets it rip. A weaving of bodies, and it's Crow that comes out with it. A turn, a bump, close quarters passing back to Crow. Just outside the 18, now cuts the corner, turns the corner, fights to the end line, off a of Fryer, and it's Providence College that knocks it out of bounds. Offensive-minded substitutions await for Butler. Katie Soderstrom and Macy Miller check in. Soderstrom, seven goals this season. Macy Miller with her fourth of the year checking in. Go 
left, goal kick one for Providence College. They're looking for the quick restart. Four and a half to go in regulation. Providence College looking to spark a rally here down a goal. Instead, it's Butler with possession. Absolutely no rush at all and none needed for Butler with Julia Leonard ready to take the throw in. Savage out of bounds. And it stays Butler ball. Another opportunity for Miller. This time it's a centering pass knocked away out of danger. Good step up by Lucia. Butler continues its opportunities. A Backdoor chance, but a swing and a miss by Savage, a misfire, and Providence content to knock it out over the far sideline. Again, the Friars just knocking it out of bounds. Butler is thrilled with this result. Some 30 seconds or so has gone off, and now a deep throw in for Providence College. About 100 yards to goal. That ball sent high into the air. A bit of a sliced miss hit sent into the sky. Savage looking to earn a throw in, a corner kick. Instead, it misses everybody. It's a goal kick. Hustle shown by Hogan. The hustle and then she'll group. Butler comes away with it. Under two minutes to go in Providence College down a goal on their home turf. Jockeying in the standings with the Butler Bulldogs. Butler looking to claim three critical points as we approach the final week of the Big East regular season. Butler jogs over a couple of players. Corner kick coming up for Katie Soderstrom. At a certain point, I would imagine Butler's just going to wait and wait and wait. They play it short. Savage sits on it in the corner. Knocked out of bounds. This is really well done strategically by Butler. One minute remaining in the second half. One minute. One minute to go. That one clips off of Amber Birchwell out of bounds. Final three minutes have been absolute chess being played by Butler. There's a quick restart for Hogan. Booms it downfield. One last chance for Providence College if they can muster it. Instead, great box out by Kowalski, earning the throw in for Butler. Schmidt with the long throw downfield. Friars yelling forward from their bench. One last chance, five to go. McNulty 
Let's it fly in on goal onto the top of the goal, and that's how it ends. A deep bid by Hannah McNulty, and Butler goes on the road, and they take out the Providence College Priors. Butler with a goal, the fourth of the year by Macy Miller. They improved to 9-4-3 and three overall. Butler now 4-1-2 and two in conference play. Tied for second in the conference with the Georgetown Hoyas. Providence College drops to 3-3-1 in Big East action. A beautiful night here in Providence, but the Friars thinking anything but on their home turf. Butler storms into Providence and takes three important points in Big East play. We're going to step aside, and when we return, we're going to have some of the important figures in tonight's victory for the Butler Bulldogs. Megan Caffrey will be joining us just around the bend. Madam Giardino, stick with us. We've got a little bit more up our sleeves right here on the Big East Digital Network. Divine Providence. It's a reason why Providence is making that trajectory toward greatness. If we get you on this campus and you just walk around for an hour or so, you're going to feel something that's qualitatively different. Providence College is a place that has helped people think, thrive, and achieve. Divine Providence is right here. Open your eyes. in Providence, 1-0 victory for the Butler Bulldogs. And we're going to send it down on the sideline. Megan Caffrey with the girl with the game winner, Macy Miller. Macy, you had the game winner here tonight. I just saw Coach St. John embracing you. What was <laughs> yeah. she saying when she hugged you? Just great job and great win. This is a huge team win for us, huge on the road. And um, we just enjoyed the little moments. So just embracing that was great. Take me through that play. You were going on your own against defenders. Take me through that. Yeah, just doing what I try to do I'm best, take on people. And um, I saw the shot, and it was open, so I took it. And I've been trying to work on my shooting, so I'm glad it, glad it went in the back of the net for sure. So it's kind of, kind of just a good feeling. Three points for your team on the road. You return home for your last two Big East matches. How is your team in the driver's seat now? For sure, I think always playing at home, you kind of have more confidence. Um, coming off a win always helps us, and um, just kind of taking control of every game at a time. We focus on each game every day at a time, and um, I think our coaches prepare us so well. So just focusing on the next game and uh, hopefully getting more results. You're winding down to the end of the regular season. How much of a goal was it for this year's team to get back to the Big East Tournament Championship match? For sure, yeah, that's always the goal is to get into the championship round, and I think uh, I think we got some good. It's a good momentum going, and uh, we're excited. So focusing one day at a time, but should uh, should be proud of ourselves for our standards high, and um, hopefully see that again this year. Macy, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Adam. All right. Thank you very much, Megan. Macy Miller, a woman of the match, the hero of the match. Incredible performance from Miller. The game-winning goal, one nothing. Butler came away on top. A big thanks to all of you for tuning in and making us part of your Thursday evening, signing off from Providence, Adam Giardino, wishing you a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. This is the Big East Digital Network.
Okay. Come on, baby. 